let me take you back a little bit. You were talking about the team in '92. You and Westerhoff, you felt you had a, a team that could go to '94. And then in between, some younger players came up again. You know, which players are you talking about? We, we saw Olise came in. Um, 92, we, we were, Finetti George was there, but Finetti George wasn't that lightning like he was when we were, you know, going towards qualification for World Cup. And uh, Amunike, Okocha came in. Um, then we, we had, who else came in? Uh, somebody else came in that, you know, was in the beginning, yeah, we had Eti Messi, you know, also, but we, we relied on Eti Messi because he has so much skills, so much, so, so much to offer. We said, this is our Diego Maradona in, in Nigeria because he can do anything with the ball. He's, he was, I think he was born with the ball. But unfortunately, he lost track, and and then we started, you know, building our homes around Siasia, Mutiu, Adepoju, uh, JJ started coming up, Olise, Amokachi. Amokachi came up, and Amokachi was, oh, Amokachi, you need two guys to handle Amokachi if, when Amokachi is alive, you know. And, and I West Side will come to to Anderlecht. Oh no, I was in Strasbourg, in France. He would come to Strasbourg and say, Hey, you know what? I think we're going to walk up. I said, That's the only thing I want to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> because after '94, I'm done playing for Eagles. I need to take this team to the World Cup. He said, No, 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 you're not done. With the four you football you're playing, you still gotta play more. I said, Okay. Let's qualify for World Cup. There we talk, <laughs> you know. So, with all these talents coming in, young blood, you know, mixing with experience, and Westerhoff is just, he knows how to manage players and he knows what to tell them. And we were building, you know, building, and he, the balance was there. You know, we finally got the balance, and and that was it. And we were like family. Uh, we were playing for the love. There was no, there was no uh, segregation. There was no uh, favorism. There was nothing of that, those words, you know. The, because my goal was to build a very good team for Nigeria as a captain, to win, to qualify. And, and I let the other players realize that, hey, I'm not going to stay here for long. This is the time I'm going to be here for, and I want to do something tangible. When I leave, I know I left something behind. And if you're ready, you come with us. If you're not ready, please go your own way. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody was in the same boat, you know, and uh, it was fine. We... You, you, you speak with so much confidence and authority, you know. You are apparently a very, very strong and influential captain of the national team. And I'm sure that's why the media called you the big boss. And uh, at a point, we actually even said you are the one picking the team, not Westerhoff. <laughs> so tell us, who was picking the team? It wasn't me, it was Westerhoff. <laughs> <laughs> Westerhoff picked the team, and I mean, for but you if, to know. If, if Skipper, the Skipper, Keshi says, this boy is not going to play. No, if I say he's not going to play, it's not just me. I have the entire team behind me, but I'm the spokesperson, okay. being the captain. So, so somehow they see that I decide for Western. I never decide. Western is a very stubborn person. <laughs> he, he, is very, he, he will love up with you, will, but he's very stubborn when it comes to, you know, to pick his team. But he asks me for my own opinion. Yeah. What is your opinion? What do you think? And I'll tell, listen, these are things that the boys are saying behind the doors. I just want to let you know, and we need, you know, see what he can do. And he tells me, what do you think? I said, well, because we, we eat together, we drink together, we sleep together, we know what we want. I think the boys, you might do what the boys want. 
And then I have to go back to the boys and say, listen, you guys said this, this is your one. Now he's putting it in place. You better make it right. So you see, the ball is on their court. Yeah. I, sometimes I put pressure on them. Sometimes I let them know that you've committed yourself. You have to do it now. And most of the time it works because I'm on their faces all the time. Hey, you ask for it. Let's do it. Don't, don't talk too much. Just put it in action. And then you see them, they're like angry lions when you see them on the field. They, because the big boys have spoken. <laughs> well, not that, that I've spoken, but... I think, I think uh, obviously, your, your players, they had a lot of respect for you. I mean, it was very, very clear. It was very clear to see. Um, I remember the 94 final, after we won, beat Zambia by two goals, when Nigeria won, beat, you know. Um, it was uh, Austin Iguabon, Iguabon, was the captain. Yeah. Yeah. And then he said, look, big boys, come and take the cup. How did you feel? Well, I felt it was a good feeling. Because in the real sense, Austin was not supposed to captain. But I should have given the captainship because when I spoke to West Star, I said, listen, I'm not going to play. So somebody's going to be a captain. And I approached Rashidi Yakini because I thought after me, it should be Rashidi, the oldest then. Rashidi said, listen, am I for me captainship? Be fair. Don't give me. <laughs> that thing is a load. And I try to give it out in some matches. You captain for this game, you captain. And most of them, when they come out, they say, please don't give me captainship bad again. It's too heavy. Benny Rowers have seen. Said, I don't want to, I don't want it. It's too. And I said, okay. And I didn't want to give it to Peter Rufai. Why not? Because Rufai is an excellent goalkeeper. He's, he was my best man when I got married in, in Belgium. We're very good brothers, friends. But if the players don't see you as a role model, they don't see you as team leader, team leader it's not going to work out. And I told Rafael, I said, I won't be playing. I know you'll be expecting to captain, but I'm not going to give it to you. These are the reasons. He was very upset. He said, no. I have to be the captain. I said, you cannot be the captain because nobody's going to listen to you. So I'll give this band to Austin. And I said, no, when did Austin come to the camp? I said, I know. I understand you. I understand your feeling. But you don't understand the rest of the team feeling. You're just an individual versus the rest of the team. So don't worry about that. We are captains. So it doesn't matter if you don't put on the band. You're still a captain. So I gave it to Austin. Austin said, Don't worry about the, the captaincy band. Just play your game. And he just, he did well. He did well. And, and the boys like him too. You know, so at the finals, I thought I could play, but it wasn't in the last um, warm up, the day before the game. Mm -mm. Did some sprinting, no way. Uh, to West Arab. I love to play, but this is a final, you know. Uh, so I was, I, it was a good feeling when, when, I, when he gave me the band to pick up the, the cup. I said thank you, and I said thanks to the players. Yeah. It's good. So we can now go back to the World Cup and end with that. Um, so after the Nations Cup in Tunisia, you got the trophy. We now went to the World Cup in US in '94. I know you did not play the first game against Bulgaria. No, the first two games I didn't play. You didn't play. I was, we, we left, yeah, we had the training camp in Holland, Holland, I, I believe, in Papadon. Then I was nursing my knee injury at that time. I had a special trainer. I went to Holland with Westerhoff, uh, you know, doing some good training program to build myself up. and. It went well. So things were going well. We started camping and playing some friendly matches, which I was doing, uh, until we got to the United States, Dallas. First day, training was good. Then on the second day training, we played against a team from Mexico or somewhere. <clears throat> Excuse me, and we won 9-0 or something. And at the end, I had a click. The same day, 
J'arrive, j'arrive. Je vais faire l'interview là, j'arrive. And same day, the coach I had it. Same game, last minute. He had mozzuti or something. And you know, the doctors and physiotherapists all night, 24 hours treatment, but no way. Uh, so we brought Chidi in. Chidi one. Chidi one, you know. Uh, so the first game against Bul Bulgaria, I didn't even dress up with, with JJ. Then the second game, it was the third game JJ played, and I played the third game too. Yeah, against, you played the third game against against Greece. against Greece. Yeah, because I remember you congratulating Amokachi when he scored that. Goal yeah, that goal. yeah. But even yeah. with the, with with the game with with the Greece game, I had to play with a lot of pain yeah. and a lot of injections. We we'll just take it from the from the. Bulgaria game because even though you didn't play, that was a, a, a historic match for Nigeria. I mean, the first one, yeah, match, we won three goals to nil. You know, before the game against Bulgaria, we knew that Bulgaria they've lost already because um, we played about three friendly matches or four. They will just bring the entire team to watch us play. We played in Romania. They came with the entire the Stoikov and everybody to watch us play. We went to Sweden. Everybody came. We went. To, we played somewhere else. They all came. I said, "What is wrong with these people?" I mean, <laughs> you're playing against Nigeria. That's it, you know. And somehow they could not figure out what we're doing because most of the time they came, we were not even playing with the entire team. We we're playing the rest of us trying some few players. Bringing some players, and Harry most Kano. of us were not even playing. Kano. Exactly. Caribou, uh, Jigwe, and so on and so forth. So we just, he was just trying everybody. And most of the kids didn't even go to World Cup. Yeah, Tijani Babangida. Tijani Babangida and Cole. But Tijani went, but he didn't play. He, didn't play. he, he went a special case. And the day of the game against Bulgaria, you know, their dressing room was close to ours. They were just looking at us. <laughs> and I said, these guys, are, they are doomed, they're they gone, they're finished. And, but we were so lucky. They would have scored first goal. First 15 minutes, they had two clear chances. But Rufai was excellent that day. Rufai was, um, phew, after the saves, that was it. R Rashidi, bam, great goal for Amunike and Omokachi. Omokachi. That was it, you know. Uh, what was the celebration like that night? I want to know. No, it was just like any other celebration. This was a World Cup match. It doesn't actually. matter. You know, we know, we know we're good. We know we can play. Um, and we've seen it in their eyes that they're afraid of us. So we just used the opportunity. And God was on our side because the two saves from the five, first 15 minutes, it would have, would have, that would have made a difference. And... We just, that was it. We need to concentrate for the next game. There was no big celebration. It was just part of daily activity. The, the next game was against Maradona and Argentina. Argentina. Maradona is one of the best players we've seen in the world. Mar Maradona, I think sometimes he said, a tree cannot make a forest. But in the case of Argentina, it does. Because, I mean, I see him before then. Well, when I started respecting Maradona was when I played against him in Champions League or UEFA Cup or something. Uh, I know he's, he's God gifted, you know what I mean? But I saw him in the World Cup 1994. He's from another planet. I mean, what he does with the ball is unbelievable. And that is where I just, I stood up for him and I say, this is, we, you know, it comes and go, people like this. He's, he's an exceptional player. I, I don't think if the word carries enough weight behind Maradona, he's, he's so good. Such, I don't know. But unfortunately for Argentina, you know, he was, he was uh, suspended for yeah. taking drugs or something That's after our game. 
I think we lost two one against them. Yes, yes, God did. And he killed us. He killed us. He just himself with Kanija or whatever what was that name. Killed us and and you can see it's after the suspension, Argentina was gone. You can't find Argentina play anymore because Diego was not there. We should have had that before <laughs> you know. And we played against um, Greece. Greece was the first Greece. That was the one you. That was, that was the one, one that I played in my first game. Um, we won 2 0. Great goals from Samson. The first from Finidi. No, Finidi and, and oh, Mokachi. The last minute goal. Beautiful. You, you, you were at the back uh -huh. and you, you saw that goal coming. Mm -hmm. I want you to describe describe that goal. The way Mokachi got the ball and moved, and then that. It was a wonderful goal. I can't remember the build up, but yeah. I can. As I speak with you, I can see the action, you know, and and the flight of the ball going to the net, you know, uh, was a, it wasn't a, it wasn't with power, but was a, with a lot of precision and technique, you know. There was power too. Yeah, there was power, but not that power, you know. It, there are some goals you score, you think is a lot of power, but it's just a technique. You know, striking the ball in the right place, and and that was, uh, was a beautiful goal. It was one of the most beautiful goals in the in the World Cup. That's true, very true. And then you went on to the second round against Italy. Yeah, Italy is when we started having. You know, like I told you, the problem with with Togo when you guys are not united, there's nothing you're gonna do. So what happened in, in the Nigerian team before that match against Italy? I don't know what happened into West Arab's head, you know. Um, before the game, we we're, were all doing fine. We picked the team, everything was fine. We we're training, focusing on the Italy game. And I think two days before the game, two days or a day before the game, yeah. West Arab came into the camp and said, he came to me and said, we need to change hotel. I said, what? Change hotel now. We are 24 hours before the game or 48 hours before the game. If we change hotel, we need to get used to that place. Uh, there's no concentration anymore because the boys are moving things. We've been in this place almost two weeks. Why are we changing? Oh, a lot of journalists, a lot of women coming in. I said, you have your wife here. Our wives are here. We play in Europe with our wife staying with us. And we play good. Our wife is not staying in the same room with us. They have their own hotel. So what is your problem? Oh, no, no. They tell me the players are not. I say, hey, hey, hey. What is it? Talk to me. <laughs> it's me. He wanted us to move by all means. We got to move, I said. Then I spoke to the players. The players said, they can't move now. There's no way. <laughs> Go back, tell them we cannot move. Went back and said, hey, the boys said they, they're not moving. They already, you know, um, they, they, it's like they're into their homes here. They, everything is going fine. Why, you know? He said, we have to move. So I don't know. We caught up a meeting. And he accused me of something that, yeah, I said, there are too many, something came up. And I said, hey, 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 I'm not dead. You're lying on me. What, what are you talking about? You came to my room and said, we're going to move. And now you're putting on my head. So Daniel and Siasi got up and said, hey, do not lie on our captain like that. We know you're fond of doing this. That was Daniel speaking. That, hey, each time there's a big game coming up, you always find a way to cause the confusion. What is your problem? We, we, without you, we're going to go play this game. And whatever is going to happen should happen. You know? So everybody was upset with him. The whole camp was disarray. Uh, there was nothing going on anymore. So I think the, the very day, so he left the camp. He left. He left the camp. He didn't sleep in the camp for two West days. Westside left the camp. Westside left the camp. So we're, we're with Chuku, um, Chairman Chuku, we're with Bonfrey, we're with Biwarang. Biwarang, and 
So we said, hey, we'll go and practice without him. So we went out, practiced on our own, came back. Then the day of the game, it came in the morning. At first, we said, we don't want you. In the beginning, we said, we don't want you. You left, we don't know what you did outside, coming in. Well, no, we're going to go play like that without you. You know, then Chairman Chuku and, you know, said, Bill Aran said, no, big boss. No, I said, no. You can't abandon your family like that. I mean, it's not done. We, after this game, we probably might find ourselves in the quarterfinals or something, and you hear breaking the camp. You should not be the one, you know. The boys, Mokachi and Ko Uche Okichuku said, we don't want him. Let him go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to turn around again, started begging them, listen, forget, and this, blah, blah. I think that day we spoke to late um, head of state, uh, Abacha. Okay. We spoke to him on the phone and, you know, was trying to encourage us for the game. But we wouldn't tell him the problem in the camp. We just spoke to him. And then the Nigerian ambassador came from New York with Akim Olajimo. Trying to play things cool, not everything you're gonna know, you know. So we calm everything down. So we sort of came. Then he changed the lineup. He took Sassy out, he took me out, he took somebody else out. And the boy said, Okay, Chuku Uchi said, What are you doing? Why are they not playing? He said, Because I changed the lineup. I'm the I'm the coach. Hey. He's a coach, we respect, no problem. So Samson got upset, almost wanted to walk out. I said, you know, you don't do that. You don't do that. You, he's the coach. Whatever he decides, it's, it's final. So no, even if I don't play, you should play. We need you in the team. I said, hey, we need everybody. So don't worry, let's, let's go to the game. But you can see there was no more spirit in the game. We lost everything 24 hours before, before, the before the match. There was nothing going on right in the camp. People were now strolling in and out. There was no more discipline. There was no respect for anything. And uh, we went in, almost won the game. Two, three minutes to the end, we considered two goals. And that was it. Uh, then we didn't. We couldn't find Westerhoff anymore. He left for about, for about two days, you know, um, before we, you know, we just, it was, it was a cheerful thing. The ending but, was, was yeah, not but, good. Yeah, but you, you are very close with Westerhoff. I mean, here you are, you've just told us about how both of you sat together in 1990 in Belgium, and you set this goal for 1994. So how did it now end that way? I don't know what came up to West Arab. I don't know. And, and I didn't ask him up to today. But um, Bonfrey said, you need to ask your friend some questions, some serious questions, what happened before the game. I said, listen, I'm not, it's not my duty to ask him. He doesn't have to send me a report. In, if, he, if there's any report to be made to the FA, not me, and I'm just a player. I said, because things went down that he knows of, but he cannot speak. I said, well, that, then hold it. Do not tell me. I don't, know, I don't want to hear. So I fly. In fact, I was, I was in, my house was in California. So I, fly, I flew from, I flew from, we in Boston. Boston. Boston, I just flew home with my wife to, to, to California, and, and that was it. Stayed a little bit with the family, and then, then and continued my, a little bit of my football career and stuff.